Okay, as I was uh, saying, we'll start looking at the kinetic term. When we're using generalized coordinates, um, we'll see what are the differences compared to using Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so. Okay. So, first, what do we see when we see when we work with Cartesian coordinates? It will be nice to have um, color. Let's see if I can do it quickly. I can. Good. Good. I think it is done. Um, Cartesian. Okay. So what do you see when you are using Cartesian coordinates? You get T as half M I, let me put R dot, okay, half M Y, R I dot square. That's what it is. Okay. So um, this is of course quadratic in velocities. Note that there is no term which involves the product of velocity of particle i with the particle j. Okay, there is no 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 such term. So they are all um, t is really diagonal in the velocities. Okay. Also note that there is no um, factor in here which depends on the coordinate itself. So t does not depend on the coordinate but only on the velocities. This is another thing. And also note that there is no linear term. It's all just quadratic, okay? So when you're using generalized coordinates, T um, is quadratic in R dots, okay? Note that there is no, no dependence on on R, okay, and also, for example, um, there could have been a R square dependence, okay, which is absent, and also there is no, um, what I wanted to say, there is no R I dot R J dot kind of a term here, okay, where I is not equal to J. You have only the terms where I and J are equal. Right, so there are no cross terms. T E R M, no cross terms are present. And let's see what the situation is when we start using generalized coordinates. Oops. Okay. Let's see if I can make. Okay, I don't know why I'm making it colorful, but let's see. Okay, good. Now, I don't know how to go get the green back. Oh, that's sad. Mm, yeah, here is the green. Okay, let's look at the generalized coordinates now. Yeah, we have already in, um, looked at T in at least few contexts. And you remember when we were looking at a uh, particle which was moving in two dimensions, x, y plane, and we were using polar, uh, polar coordinates. At that time, we wrote the kinetic energy of that particle in polar coordinates, and it was half m r square theta dot square plus r dot square. So in this example itself, you see that this condition is this not condition. This, this, this thing is not true, right? Generalized coordinate r can appear 
or in principle in some different context some other uh, other coordinates could also appear okay so it's not just the generalized velocities theta dot and r dot appear but also uh, coordinate itself can appear which is the case here here it is still of um uh, the form where cross terms are not present so you still don't have a term like theta dot r dot but as i will show that this is also not uh, a general statement in principle they can be present okay that's one thing and also here uh, you don't have a term which is just involving the velocity of one of the coordinates and as you're going to see very soon that that is also not a general statement so let's see um, let's see what the general expression would be this was one specific example okay which we covered uh, in one of the previous videos so in general the kinetic energy can be written as a sum of three terms okay which i will call as t0 plus t1 plus t2 where t0 is independent of q dots okay independent of the generalized velocity so let me put alpha and alpha will run from 1 to whatever degrees of freedom you have so it will be independent of all the generalized velocities and that is what zero signifies t1 is a term which will be linear in generalized velocities linear in generalized velocities velocities which is q alpha dots okay then t2 will be quadratic in q dots okay that's what we'll prove now so what i want to prove is this that the let us see yeah so i will uh, introduce a notation and make what i said just now more explicit that it will t will have the form t0 plus i said that this will be t1 would be linear in velocities so t q um sorry t1 would be having a form like q alpha dot times some coefficients or some functions let me call it t1 alpha okay i distinguish this t1 alpha from t1 because t1 has no index and this guy has so it's clearly it's not the same quantity so you have t1 alpha and there'll be a sum over all the alpha that's good then as i said there'll be terms which are quadratic so you could have q alpha dot q beta dot and t2 alpha beta summation over all alpha and beta okay so whatever i said here is more explicitly written here and note that i am saying that it's not q alpha dot q alpha dot i'm saying q alpha dot q beta dot because cross terms may be present okay and this is what we want to prove now and proof is simple proof okay so what do i have to do just remember that half m i r i dot square sum over all the particles good now your r i will be related to your generalized coordinates by the following r i q1 to whatever q you have let's say 3 and minus k total number of degrees of freedom and it could also possibly depend on time 
okay your constraints of uh, constraints on the system may be changing with time so your transformation from r to the generalized coordinates would involve time as well that's good all i have to do is take this take the time derivative so that i get an r dot and take the r dot square and put in here okay that's all i have to do which is not difficult so dr just a second hold on please okay so the velocity is dr i over dt which is del r i over del t so you take the partial derivative and then you take the partial derivative with respect to all the coordinates alpha r i and you have q alpha dot and you should sum over all the alphas that's good now i take this which is r i dot and square it r i dot square okay so i write this as del r i over del t plus the same thing which you have above okay then i should dot it with again the same piece delta r i remember i is the label for the particle delta t plus summation delta r i over delta q alpha q alpha dot summation over alpha okay now if you have not already noticed the mistake and if you have not noticed still uh, despite my telling that it's a mistake um, you need to uh, know one thing that this is going to give a trouble if i use the same index alpha which is here and the same index alpha here okay i should be very careful and i should not use the same index on both the sides so it will be wiser to change alpha to beta okay q beta q dot beta beta okay and i leave it to you to figure out what will be the problem if i use alpha in this piece and alpha in here also okay you, you should know why you'll get in trouble okay that's good now i should take the dot products what happened yeah now this so i take a dot of this with that which is easy r over delta t square okay then i will take a dot product of this piece with this term okay del r this piece with that term and you will have another similar term coming from this one and this one okay and they are both same because the alpha is dummy okay i'm just summing over all possible uh, alpha so in these two products this times that and this times this i can use the same indices okay maybe i'll go slowly so that you can see plus let's multiply this with that one so i get delta r i over delta t that is correct dot summation over beta delta r i over delta q beta q beta dot and then you look at the product of this guy with this guy which is delta r i over delta t coming from here dot 
summation over alpha delta r i delta q alpha q alpha dot okay this dot product is because of the two vectors here that's good and then you have one more term plus product of these two these two will give you term which is quadratic in the velocities okay these ones are generating terms which are linear in velocity there is only one uh, velocity involved here one velocity involved here plus so i write down summation over alpha summation over beta delta r i over delta q alpha dot because there is a dot product here delta r i delta q beta and then you have q alpha dot q beta dot q alpha dot q beta dot now what i was saying earlier was that this beta here can be replaced by alpha it doesn't matter right you are just summing over all the um, coordinates and multiplying with the relative uh, corresponding velocities so i will replace this beta by alpha then these two become identical and the sum will have a factor of 2 which is um, so these two together become 2 delta r i over delta t dot summation over alpha delta r i over delta q alpha q alpha dot okay that's good so this is what i was claiming here first term no velocities are involved in here but this is a function of um, q and t okay right now i'm writing r as a function of q and t right so this is a function of q and t but there are no velocities involved in here so that's belongs to t naught then this piece has only linear dependence on the generalized velocities so that's what is here and so you can read off from from here after summing over all the masses okay and all the particles your t1 alpha and this is the one which is going to give contribution to t2 alpha okay so let's see i will write this down what happened okay so here we have or maybe i can let's see if i can do it there itself um let's okay um yeah maybe not let's be neat and clean so i will write t as i'm just now bringing in the half m i uh, which was remaining and i have to sum over all the particles so if you look at what we had earlier i had dt square right let's see r i uh, uh, del over del t of the square so there's the first term which is what your t0 is now let's look at the second term good i will multiply this with half m i and sum over all the i's so you'll get summation over i 2 times half of m i delta r i over delta t dot delta r i over delta q alpha okay and this is the summation over alpha which i can take out and i can put the summation over i in here and put the summation over alpha here this entire thing with q alpha dot so let's check q alpha dot this summation i have pulled out and the sigma over i have pulled in so this is the piece which is 
this piece this entire thing is your t1 alpha good plus the term which is quadratic in velocities and here you will have summation over alpha and beta then summation over i half m i and we had alpha r i over delta q alpha q beta very good q alpha dot q beta dot and this is what your this piece is t2 alpha beta let's see what did we call t2 alpha beta yes okay so i have proved what i was claiming that you have all all kinds of terms here and note that these coefficients um, t1 alpha and t2 alpha beta and t not they they depend on uh, generalized coordinates and time in general and there may be cases depending on what kind of coordinates you are using uh, that some of the coordinates may not appear and some of uh, velocities may <coughs> will uh, generalized velocities may not appear linearly but those will be specific to those cases but that's the that's the general result in front of you okay we'll stop this video here and we'll uh, meet next time